we have so much that we could share. And so I feel like the best way for people to get an audience or to get more people, get more eyeballs looking at them, is to share that kind of stuff. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Hey, this is Enoch, and welcome back to the Business of Architecture, the show for solo architects, where each week I bring you an interview exploring how you can leverage your skills as an architect to make more money so you can forget about paying the bills and focus on creating great architecture. Today we are joined by three architects, Neil Pan, Evan Troxell, and Cormac Phelan. At the beginning of 2013, Neil, Evan, and Cormac started a candid, behind-the-scenes and wittily entertaining podcast titled Archispeak, the podcast that dares to peek under the architectural kimono. Now, from the Archispeak Twitter page, Archispeak is defined as large, made-up words that architects and designers use to make themselves sound smarter than you. So prepare to feel very sophisticated and smart as Evan, Cormac, and Neil take us down the rabbit hole and into the world of Archispeak. Today we discuss how architects can use the web to get more visibility and other cerebral topics that only architects would understand. Well, hey guys, welcome to this this joint. I'm going to call it a joint business of architecture and Archispeak broadcast because really I have the questions. You guys have the answers and plenty of opinions, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <Probably. laughs> so, you know, I just recently posted an interview that's going to go live um, when we're recording this interview. Well, it's an interview I did a while ago with um, an intern architect named Pat Flynn. And I don't know if you guys have heard of Pat or what he's done, his story. But in 2008, uh, Pat was laid off from his uh, firm, just like I was. I was laid off in 2008 down in Panama. Pat was laid off uh, from his firm. And he was about to get married, you know, about to get an apartment to get with his girlfriend. And so, like others who went through that, it was devastating, you know. And I know we all experienced that to some degree. We saw our friends and people we cared about or ourselves going through that difficult transition. But what's interesting about Pat is what happened is he actually, um, he had this blog going on where he was teaching architects. Well, actually, he was just um, posting his own thoughts about the LEAD AP exam. And unbeknownst to him, he had a huge following. So when he quit his job, he started getting into like online marketing. And within a month, um, he figured out that he could start making money from his blog. And the first year after he was laid off, he made um, over six figures. And now he's making roughly fifty to sixty thousand dollars a month. Wow! Wow! And so you guys, you know, feel free to watch that and read up on his story because what I think that tells us, and this is just a preface to our conversation, but that um, there's a lot of money to be made on the internet. And I don't say in a way of like, let's be scammy and let's go out there and make money on the internet. What I mean is that there's a lot of business transactions that are happening. You know, people are spending more time there. And so then that's one thing I think you guys are really um, modeling is being there in that space getting visibility. And so what I'd like to talk about today is the insights you guys have picked up about how other architects, small firms, or solo architects, because I really feel that right now solo architects are sort of under attack because of the changing business environment. So if we can figure out how to leverage web tools to get more exposure, get more clients, there's there's something where we can all gain from that. Well, I think uh, his example is another um another way that architects uh, can use their education to do other things other than, than the traditional architecture course. You bet. So let's, let's before we get into the questions, let, tell us about Archerspeak. There are some people probably going to find this. They don't know me from Boo, and they might not know you guys either. So just give us a short little snippet of what you guys are and who wants to be the mo mouthpiece. Neil. Me? All right. Um, <laughs> Arca Speak. Um, you know, it's a podcast um, that was, I think, envisioned originally just as, you know, the three of us getting together and as if you'd kind of walked by the water cooler in the office and there was a conversation going. And just to kind of um, share our, our own ideas or opinions about the, the profession 
and architecture in general and sometimes you know not architecture off topic as, as well so really just the three of us hanging out talking um, that you might find a, a conversation happening in, in an office and I think that's really the, the goal goal yeah what's your goal what do you I mean I know you guys aren't I, I get the impression you guys aren't in it for any for yourselves particularly but you sort of have a grander grander idea that you're pursuing well, yeah, I would say that our, our goal is to share, you know, and just give people kind of a look behind the curtain. That's really yeah. all, it, that's all how, why we started it was because, and I think, I, I, you know, when, when I was in school, I wished that there was something like this where we could kind of get a glimpse as to what really happens. And the nice thing about us being in three different scenarios and three different parts of the country is that there's a pretty broad range of experiences there. And so it, it's kind of a, a really rounded look at what it's like to be working for yourself, working for a small firm and working for a medium sized firm. Um, you know, I think that that's great insight to be able to have that and really, if not make a decision based on that, at least just have a glimpse and see what's going on out there. Um, and the, the things that we deal with on a daily basis. And, yeah. and also um, if I can just add to that, um, one of the things that, seems like it's been evolving since we started this is almost a it's almost like a you know an online advice column for a lot of uh, new um, you know interns students uh, you know younger um, younger architects and even older architects that you know have kind of felt and you know experienced the same pain that we've you know had um, we've got a lot of uh, interns in my office that actually do listen to the podcast and they, you know, it's like, Oh, I, you know, I really wish somebody would have said that when we were in school, you know? And so there's a lot of, in, in there seems to be a theme that we have uh, going on in a lot of the comments that we get are, you know, these are things that they don't really teach us in school, but are really valuable um, as, you know, things that are, part of the future of our profession or or this is what I'm going to be experiencing when I get out of school and no one's telling us that so I'm really glad that you're doing that you know kind of exposing what we're going to be doing you know and and I think we've all you know as we've talked about it in our podcast you know architectural education seems to be limited on what they really teach people when it comes to um, you know, what the profession's really going to be giving them. You know, they kind of keep them in the bubble. They should, you know, kind of live within that, you know, um, design and, you know, the idealized world. And then, you know, poof, just throw you out into the, you know, out into the wolves. And oh, it, it's a complete, it's a, it's a rude awakening sometimes. Yeah. And that's kind of what we, you know, kind of try to help dispel is that it may be tough, but it's also amazing. Great. Well, and I think that the point you make about you guys, the variety of the makeup of the Archer Speak crew. So we have Neil, who's a sole practitioner. We have Evan, who works for a large firm that does schools and civic work. And then Cormac, you're with you're the one with the medium sized firm. Is that right? I'm in the medium sized firm, and we also do a lot of uh, civic work, um, K through twelve. Uh, yeah you know, that kind of stuff, recreational work as well. We do a lot of similar work as what Evan does, but just probably um, we just, uh, single office, smaller firm, firm of uh, 22 people. Okay, great. Well, one thing I'd like to sort of touch on, going with the idea of spreading of information, because I think what you, you guys hit upon a, a really interesting point that the information you're putting out there is going to give the architects who are following in our footsteps a lot more information than we had at their age, at least regarding the profession. So, and I think we've only started to tap what the internet can really do for connecting people and, you know, doing business and helping people add value to each other. So let's just jump in really quick and, and let's start with Neil. Neil, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your experience with the internet and how it's changed maybe your profession as an architect in terms of just take it from there sure um, you know I think when I first uh, I mean when we first started experiencing the internet I think in general the firm that saw it that I was working for at the time and myself saw it as a way to gather information 
Um, it, I mean, suddenly, uh, say like a suites catalog or product information was much more readily accessible. And that's kind of maybe the first step. Uh, and then I think uh, later on it was, oh, you know, instead of saying printing a set of drawings, uh, you know, we could just upload it to an FTP server and our clients can download it. And there were issues involved with that, of course, all the time. And, and but those are less nowadays. And even early days, internet or, or just email. It was like, wow, I can, I can email my clients instead of just calling them all the time or missing calls or, you know, making communication between your clients and yourself much more readily available. Uh, and I think that that changed the whole uh, face of the way architects interact with our clients and our consultants as well. And I think, you know, later on, now we're kind of in this social media era of the internet where, you know, you can have your, your Twitter account, your Facebook page, uh, Google Plus pages, and um, it gets you out quite a bit more than, uh, than was possible before. I think before, you know, architects had a web page, and that may be your public, uh, public place that, that clients could get information about you, your, your online brochure. But I think um, web pages uh, and uh, with the addition of the blogs and other social media, now you can have a conversation with not only your clients but other architects. So I really think this, this social media era that we're in as far as the internet is allowing uh, a much larger uh, uh, voice and global scope to all architects. I mean, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I'm talking and have met other architects from you know, all around the world essentially now. And that necessarily hasn't turned into, hey, I'm gonna get, you know, have my next job. Um, but, uh, but that does uh, expand your reach and through uh, your own blog or, uh, or through a blog, you can share information um, and, and share information with, with potential clients or with other architects. Okay. And so I think that's been very exciting. So let, let's, let's open it up and just, I'm, I'm gonna pose a question to each three of you and just try kind of brainstorm in what ways can architects, maybe sole practitioners or small firms and even large firms, Evan, um, use the internet to build relationships that'll bring in more work, that will redefine what we do, add value to um, the profession, basically market ourselves better. Well, what avenues we, are, are best for that? We just talked about this in, in our, our last podcast, I believe it was episode nine, where we talked about um, sharing and, and kind of like what we're doing on ArcaSpeak, which is just showing people what we do. Um, and I made the analogy on there that, you know, I, I believe architects should be a lot more like chefs and like you're watching the Food Network, where they're not afraid to give away their recipes and show people how they do what they do. I don't think that people are out there looking to take that, but for the same reason people watch reality TV, if they just want to see into somebody else's world because it is interesting. Uh, what we do is extremely complicated and I don't think people get that at all. I think people watch some of these reality shows like trading spaces used to be one of them where, you know, we can redesign this place over a weekend and, and therefore it's easy, right? Um, but you know, you're looking on a small TV and you're 30 feet away from that paint job because you know that that looks like crap in real life. And uh, what we do is complicated and then there are so much coordination that happens between all of these different consultants and contracting and the, the client, the owner. Um, we have so much that we could share there. And so I feel like the best way for people to get an audience or to get more people, get more eyeballs looking at them is to share that kind of stuff. And so, you know, that's what I do on my websites. That's what I encourage other architects to do as well. There's so much knowledge. People aren't looking to, uh, to take it. They're looking to find somebody to trust. And, yeah. uh, and I, I think that's a big that. deal. Evan, you have a very interesting website called Get Method. Yeah. And I'd like to, for you to give it a specific example. So those people who may not, they may want something more concrete about the sharing of content. Can you give me a specific example of how this would work to help the lay person understand what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, for, on getmethod.com, I share video tutorials on how to use the software that I use every single day when I'm designing buildings. And so if I can, 
and, and my target audience is not layman. If they want to watch, that's totally fine. My target audience is architectural designers. And so again, I'm just giving away knowledge that I've gained by trial and error myself and things that I've picked up. I do the same thing in my studio at work with, with the other interns who come in and work. You know, I, I love to give tips and I love to teach people this stuff because it makes them better. And my goal is that we have better architecture in the world. Um, there is very small percentage of all of the buildings that are built are well done. And so if I can do anything about that to make it better where people can get up to speed faster, hit the ground running, um, you know, I'm all for it. I think that that's what we should be doing. And so everybody has their expertise. You should be sharing it. Awesome. Awesome. Cormac, what's your input on web tools and social media for spreading ideas and getting visibility? Well, um, the, the thought of social media in a tool of marketing for architects, that's, that's growing now. And I, I, I honestly haven't been able to wrap my mind around the best way of using that, um, where it, you know, translates to more business for our firm. You know, we, our particular firm has, you know, been established for 50 years and they've got, you know, good, you know, name recognition. And that's still, we're kind of under the old traditional method of, you know, handshake and, you know, uh, getting our projects that way. But when it comes to um, how I see it and view it as professional development, it's become an extraordinarily invaluable tool. I mean, I wouldn't have met these two guys that, you know, were on this adventure of the Speak podcast without Twitter. I mean, we met on Twitter, you know, uh, Neil happened to come to the uh, AIA National Convention last year in DC. We hung out for a week and, you know, he started talking about these ideas about the podcast and stuff. And what the podcast has done is let me see, you know, and in, in, in social media as in general, has seen that there are other architects out there that have valuable information that can make, as, as Evan said, can make better architecture. And that's what we're all here to do. And that's what we all want to do is make good architecture. Um, and, you know, and, and I think the sharing, the open sharing of ideas, um, you know, the, the outreach, the, the just, you know, you know, looking at the web page is not simply as a um, business card, but also as a, you know, um, a way to look and find other good work out there, you know, to kind of inspire, you know, I, I use a lot of this more as, you know, kind of like my own little inspiration to kind of keep me moving um, in the right direction forward. Okay. Well, so one thing about, if we're talking about, let's talk about websites a little bit, because one thing, if I can give a suggestion about my observation, it seems that websites are such a rich format. You know, now, even, even five years ago, websites were mostly static pictures and text. Yeah. Now you have video, you have, you can leave comments, so you can interact. So they're really turning into like this rich platform. And I know that a lot of that deals with specifically with social media. So Neil, I just wanted to ask you, you recently redesigned your website and you're involved, you have some social media on your site. What advice could you give to small practitioners out there that may not have a website or thinking about doing that, about what you've learned from getting your stuff online? Sure. Um, have good photos uh, <laughs> is one thing. And, um, you know, find a, find a platform to, to use that uh, makes, makes your life easier. Uh, I know when, when we publish, um, even on ArchiSpeak, because my site and ArchiSpeak's website are, are hosted on Squarespace, and that platform makes it very easy to share um, when there's updates to multiple locations, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, to Facebook, and so on. So uh, that makes it my life a little bit easier so that um, I don't have to work as hard. Um, I'd also suggest that, um, or, or just point out that, getting out there and doing that is a lot of work. And so in addition to your day job, uh, just finding clients and interacting and designing and producing construction documents that, um, you know, making, making sure that your voice is heard is, it does tend to be a lot of work. And so there's, you know, nights or uh, early, early mornings where I'll get up and, you know, uh, pub, you know push out tweets or schedule tweets um, and things of that nature, or write 
about uh, different topics. So those are the times that those things typically happen. And so that it does, you have to work at it. It's not something you can just put a page up and forget about it. And it becomes a ghost town. Uh, I think adding a blog to my site has helped drive a lot of eyeballs to it. Uh, there's more I can do with it, more I have planned to do with it. But as of right now, um, you know, it's getting my name out there a little bit more. Yeah. So um, real quick, Noel, if there's two, if there's an architect who's starting a site and he has to choose between, or he or she has to choose between two different social media platforms, which ones would you say the ones they want to be on first? Well, I tell you, um, it's an interesting, it's a great question. You know, there's, I have to say, I think Facebook is one place that if you're going to start a page, you know, for your, for your business, be on Facebook. You know, they've got almost 100 million eyeballs looking at that site uh, virtually every, every day or every month. And that's where there's, there's a lot of people. Twitter, there's, it's another beast, but there's a lot of action happening on Twitter as well. And ironically enough, um, I didn't really think much of LinkedIn before or even Google+. I mean, they have a, a far smaller audience. Um, but what I found is that a lot of uh, referrals to my site or commenters even on my site come from LinkedIn and Google+. I, I have really been surprised. They have uh, very dedicated communities on LinkedIn, for instance, uh, that uh, you, know, you can post in, in groups uh, or join groups and uh, very dedicated and they, they really, there's a lot of traffic that comes from those sites. And I, that actually kind of surprised me. Interesting. Well, let's just a follow up question to that. Let's talk about tra there's traffic and then there's traffic that's ready to buy, or at least one of your clients that is ready to buy your services. So I noticed you didn't mention house, but that's one of them. Um, right. Which, which out of the five there you mentioned, let's pick two purely for leads to get work. I think leads to get work you're looking at um, well, uh, probably Facebook and house as well. Uh, Facebook is, is helpful because there's just so many people. Every, everyday people are on Facebook and they're going to see that. Maybe everyday people aren't on LinkedIn. Um, and then um, house, I, I didn't mention that before, but yes, that, that's an excellent site. And actually I do have some clients uh, just recently that sent me their idea book. Um, as one of the things I typically tell clients when I first meet them is always clip out pictures or send, you know, save photographs of ideas that, you know, you have for your thinking that you're thinking of for your design. And now house has almost become this, this perfect magazine, if you will, for an unlimited supply of photo photography and that can be very uh, easily searched. Uh, for very specific spaces. And so it's a great resource and I highly recommend it to my clients uh, to go and search that. And I, I haven't seen a lot of traffic come from uh, House, but, um, but it, is, it is helpful to have a presence there as well because there's a lot of homeowners that see that site. Okay, that's the end of our first segment with the Art to Speak crew. Be sure to catch the podcast next week as Cormac, Evan, and Neil spill more of their brains as we discuss social media, and building relationships online. Well, that puts the lid on another show about the business of architecture. I really hope that you got something out of this show that can help you have more success and profit in the world of architecture. And if you want to join the discussion about this episode, you can find it on the podcast page on businessofarchitecture.com. And while you're there, feel free to share the show using the social media share links. If you sign up for the Business of Architecture Insider List, I'll send you other resources like the Architect Marketing Guide and information on how to use web tools to get more visibility for your firm and your work. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation guarantee, promise, agreement, affirmation, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, commitment, except to help architects conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5. Do it anyway.